Greetings aviators, welcome to the channel. This is Romeo Tangle. Now, the video I have prepared for you guys today uh, will seek to explain a little bit more about how aerodrome control works. Now, aerodrome control is perhaps the most visible, the most uh, recognizable form of air traffic control since many of you would have been to the airport or driven past and you'd have seen this tall building with the glass windows around it. Okay, but what really goes on there? You know, what, what happens? How, how do they do what they do? Um, how much influence do they have on the flying public at all? Well, sit back and relax because this is your opportunity to find out just how it works. Okay, let's have a look at this presentation that I have for you guys. Okay, what is airdrome control? Well, as a definition, Airdrome control, a set of instructions given by an airdrome control tower to aircraft on the maneuvering area and aircraft flying in the vicinity of the control tower. Now, control tower, that is perhaps the most visible and the most identifiable form of air traffic control facility. Okay, that's the one you see at the airport and everybody's kind of familiar with that look, you know, that, that, that building with, with the the glass, you know, 360 degrees around it, okay? And, you know, a lot of times when something happens on, you know, on the news, they'll say, oh, the pilot was in control with uh, the air traffic control tower. Um, that's potentially true. Most times it's not because most aircraft um, are so far removed from the, the, the airport that they're not really talking to, air, to the uh, air drum control tower. They're really talking to air traffic control, maybe approach control, maybe air control. But because the control tower is so familiar to people, uh, that's the easiest thing to really, to really get at. Okay, so um, that's kind of understood. Okay, we are talking about air drone control, so our understanding of what a control tower is is fine. Okay, now a term that we may not be used to is maneuvering area. Another term that we might not be familiar with is in the vicinity of the control tower. So I'll tell you what, let's go ahead and see if we can define what a maneuver area is. Okay, now the maneuvering area is defined as that part of the aerodrome used for takeoff, landing, and taxiing of aircraft, excluding aprons. Now, some terms here, let's clear them up. That part of the aerodrome that's used for takeoffs and landings is called the runway. Okay? And that area that is intended for taxiing of aircraft, they're called the taxiways. And here we have both of them, the taxiways and the runway, one runway in this case, uh, identified here, highlighted in red. Okay? So the runway is that part of the aerodrome that's intended for the landing and the takeoff of aircraft. And the taxiways are that road network that takes the aircraft from the aprons to the runway, or vice versa, the runway to the aprons. Now, the aprons is just that section of the airport that planes park at. So an aircraft is at the gate, it's on the apron. Okay, but that uh, aircraft being at the gate is not under the jurisdiction of the uh, air traffic controllers. Okay, but as we will see in a little skit that I've prepared, um, there is a gray area um, where controllers do get involved. Okay, so <clears throat> let's continue. Okay, what is in the vicinity of the control tower? What, what do we mean by that? Well, simply put, the vicinity of the control tower is more or less the control tower's airspace. Okay, there's nothing hard and fast as to what this you know the dimensions of this uh of, of these uh airspaces are but as a rule of thumb we're talking about a five nautical mile radius around the airport but this will vary from airport to airport city to city uh country to country based on the environment around the airport that will actually change the shape the size the quality and the quantity of service of the control tower's airspace, okay? But in general, what we're looking for is any aircraft that's departing the airport, any aircraft that's landing 
at the airport or any aircraft that's transiting or just generally flying around inside the control tower's airspace, they will be talking to the control tower. Okay? So, we've talked about, you know, the horizontal dimensions, but what about the vertical dimensions? The altitude. In this case, once again, there's no hard and fast um, dimension. Again, it will be dependent on, you know, the quality of service uh, that the, air, the, the control tower offers, the quantity of service, you know, the environment around the airport that will also dictate. But in general, we're talking uh, roughly 1,500 feet above the surface of the airport. Okay. But again, an aircraft is taking off, departing the airport. Aircraft is landing at the airport or an aircraft that's just transiting. These aircraft would be talking to the control tower. Okay, so let's move on. Let's have a look at uh, this little skit that I've provided for us. Okay, here we have an aircraft that's parked at a gate. And let's see how the interaction between the pilot and the controllers will go. Ari Air 001, request push and start. Ari Air 001, ground, push and start approved. Push and start approved, Ari Air 001. Oh, look at this guy here. Is this guy a controller? No, this guy's a marshaler. Now, that's the gray area where uh, the, the controller has approved a push, but what he's doing is approving the aircraft to enter the maneuvering area. The marshaller is the one who would give the pilot permission to start moving the aircraft. Well, you know, it's a little more complicated than that. But inside or in the, the, the apron area, that marshaller has jurisdiction. But the pilot still has to request permission to enter the maneuvering area. So once the aircraft is in the maneuvering area, that's the jurisdiction of the, con of the uh, controller. Ground, I rear zero, zero, 001. Request taxi. Ari Air 001, ground. Taxi to hold short runway 07 via taxiway Alpha. Contact tower. Taxi to hold short runway 07 via taxiway Alpha and contact tower. Ari Air 001. Air 001 holding short runway 07 on taxiway Alpha, ready for departure. Air Air 001 tower, wind calm, cleared for takeoff runway 07. Wind calm, cleared for takeoff runway 07, Air Air 001. Aero Reggae 876, wind calm, cleared to land runway 07. Wind calm. Cleared to land runway 07, Aero Reggae 876. Aero Reggae 876, vacate next right, contact ground. Vacate next right, contact ground, Aero Reggae 876. And here we have the marshal once again, who, remember, is not a controller. But what's happening is that the aircraft is leaving the maneuvering area to the, to the apron. So now the Marshaller takes over. Okay, his jurisdiction has begun. So he'll park the plane at that point, and the controller's duties, as far as that aircraft, will be done. Okay, so to recap, remember, the first uh, airdrome control tower was actually commissioned February 25th, 1920. Very simple structure. Okay, but as time went by, the needs of the air traffic control tower and the airdrome control tower have changed. And that has dictated how the control tower looks. Okay, here we have a few variations on, you know, what we've seen over the years. Okay, and the, 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 the appearance of the control tower will be dictated by its function. Okay, here we have a control tower in uh, Berlin, Germany. And what we see at the very top is what we call a tower cab, which is where the aerodrome control um, service will be provided from. Okay, that's pretty much what, what we expect. But below that um, can be a number of things. Most jurisdictions that will house the approach control units, 
or maybe some office space, maybe some rest areas, recreation. You know, it will vary based on the needs of that unit. Okay. And um, there are a number of different uh, things that can, can go on in something like this. But as I mentioned before, air drum control towers like a game of pool. Or, you know, the air, air drum control service is like, you know, a game of pool. You know, the controllers, you know, if things kind of get hairy, kind of get sticky. They can, you know, say, hey, you know, everybody hold position. You know, they can just take a look at it. You know, it's the only type of air traffic control that the controller can literally stop all traffic. Okay. I mean, there's never been a time in, in history where a civilian aircraft had to leave the ground. Okay. Now, of course, that's not a situation that you want to you get yourself into where you're delaying aircraft because you're trying to figure yourself out. But that option does exist. Okay. And that's the beauty of of the air drone control um, environment. Well, there you have it. Uh, hope you guys found that video uh, helpful in some way. And if you guys uh, have any questions related to this or any other aviation matter, by all means, drop me a line in the comment section below. And uh, be sure to like, subscribe, share, and comment. Helps me to help you. That being said, wind calm, clear for takeoff.